On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we talk about the Locked On Lift, the phenomenon you have never heard of because we just made it up. All that and more, but first, let's play that music. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. I just want to thank all of you for making this your first listen or first watch of the day. Uh, if you're following us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to us on an audio platform, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. As well as if it allows you to rate, please give us a five-star rating. It really helps the show uh, continue to grow. You guys have been great with following and, and tell, spreading the word about the show. YouTube channel has really started to blow up in the last week or so. So on this episode... We're talking about the locked on lift, the phenomenon that we are talking about, because really, and, and, and what what that is, the locked on lift, uh, you would I need to back up and and for maybe some of our newer newer listeners or watchers or whatever you want to call yourself or fans or of the show. So we had earlier last last summer actually we had Corey Perry and Ross Colton. We had them both on, uh, I would say, probably a week or so apart from each other. And we spoke about with Corey how uh, what it was like almost as it was almost like him signing with Tampa was a couple of years in the making, not only just because he faced Tampa two years in a row in the Stanley Cup final and lost to them, but because he's close with Pat Maroon, played with him in Anaheim, uh, pretty good friends with Steven Stamkos and a bunch of other guys, guys on the team. So for him to come here, it was kind of almost a no-brainer. Plus, uh, I made a little joke to him at that point in time that he uh, that he only likes to play. Apparently, other than Montreal last year, he likes to play in warm weather climates. Uh, and then with Ross Colton, we spoke about, obviously, his, his Game 5 heroics, what it was like as a rookie his first year in the league, how maybe some of the things with COVID uh, maybe presented some challenges to him. I mean, he only played nine games in the regular season last year, but we all know what he's done this year. He had a fantastic sophomore camp, sophomore campaign. So really, and, and I've been joking about this almost all season long, uh, and definitely go back and listen to those episodes. Those were fantastic interviews. Uh, at some point, we definitely got to get the audio, I mean, uh, the, the the video up there on, on the YouTube channel. So we'll get that to you guys maybe in the off season. Uh, but Really, the, the 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 locked on lift as and, and I can't take credit for this. This was credited to us by one of our listeners, uh, one of the fans I actually met at um, the last game of the season in New York, and, and that was Micah. Uh, he he he. We were talking about you know every time Ross does something great during the playoffs, or or Corey Perry has been doing something great. Uh, I always make the joke. Well, listen. He ever since he came on, he they came on the show. Look what they've been doing. Can't take credit for it myself, but I'll leave the rest of that to the imagination. He dubbed it the locked on lift. So we were talking back and forth and we were thinking about, you know, probably most likely not. We're not going to be able to get any guys on the team to be able to come in within the next <laughs> couple of days or so, or even during this playoffs, just because guys are geared and they just want to. They just want to focus on the playoffs. I mean, that's why you don't see any of these guys do any appearances uh, throughout the playoffs. Uh, you know, you'll see them here and there throughout the regular season, but really the summer is where uh, we'll probably get some guys on this pod. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But so we were talking, him and I, Micah and I, back and forth about who are some of the players on this team right now that need the locked on lift. And, and really, we were going up and down the list. And really, it was it was almost almost hard when I really was thinking about making this a segment was who who would really benefit the most? Because if, if you look, especially if you listened and, or watched the last episode uh, that we put out late last night at uh, after the game, a lot of these guys on this team have really started to put it together in the last two games, especially the last four uh, trailing back to that Toronto series, of course. Uh, but. 
if you look at it, who is really on the cusp of breaking out? I guess that's really a player that you want to to give that 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 lift to who who is about to break through. And I would have to say the first first player that comes to mind is Anthony Sorelli. Uh, through nine games thus far in this playoffs, he has one goal uh, plus minus of minus two, uh, and and that goal happened to be a shorthanded goal. Uh, so, you know, not too shabby for him. Uh, actually, it wasn't a shorthanded goal. Excuse me. Uh, it was just a regular goal. But um, he he has been playing fantastic. I thought he's been doing a lot of great things out there. And you know what? I have to double correct myself. It was a shorthanded goal. Uh, he has been playing fantastic. And we've been seeing Sorelli really come into his own over the last couple of years. You could see it thir- during the 2019-2020 season. He still had some of that raw talent that you saw him break into the NHL with that made him such a lovable player, such a valuable player like the one he is today. But you're, especially that playoffs uh, against, you know, Boston, against Columbus, um, the, the Islanders, uh, we, we, we spoke about it back then, how really the playoffs, especially for young players, like we saw last season with Ross Colton, uh, what he has been able to ap- accomplish this season. The playoffs, if you're ever going to see whether or not a guy is ready, and not only if they're ready, but – Really, to get a guy, just throw him into the fire because sometimes that might be that might backfire on you uh, as an NHL team throwing one of your young guys that may not be able to handle the moment as well. But at some point, they're going to have to get thrown into that situation and just figure it out as they go along. Uh, so you know, but the fact that the Lightning have such a strong core of guys who have been in this league forever, it, you know. It, you could kind of risk that, especially with the quality of young talent that the Tampa Bay organization has. So Sorelli, uh, you know, you kind of started to see him really mold into the player that he is today back during that during the bubble. And then last season, you really start to see it full time. You start to see him not only play uh, a tough physical game, which he's always been known for, but you start to see him be able to consistently play 200 feet. And especially with a guy who's a center, uh, with, and we've spoken about it in the past. Uh, last season, at, I, th- I believe at the end of the last season, uh, after they won the second cup, I think I actually uh, picked Anthony Sorelli to be an early Selkie Trophy winner for this year, or at least be in the conversation. Um, and I think, you know, he's one of those players that as he continues to develop, because he's still very young and still very I wouldn't say not even close to to hitting the, the hump of his career. I still think he has so much more to develop. I think that really and and his play style that that is very similar to Ross Colton's, which is you could tell, you know, Ross Colton obviously he plays on the wing, so he has a little bit more chances here and there to score and a little bit more room to work with, which he's so good at doing, which we've spoken about a ton. Um, but Anthony Sorelli, I mean, we we have spoken about it throughout this entire playoffs, you know. Even he he he's one of those players where he doesn't necessarily have to get on the stat sheet to to really make an impact. Um, usually on any given night, uh, whether it be during these last couple of playoff games, these last couple of playoff series, or even during the regular season, you'll see Sorelli. Uh, he's always in the thick of it. He's always bleeding too. That's the one thing you always notice about him is that uh, he's always bleeding, usually on his nose, and and that means that you know he's doing work out there. Uh, so I, I think we have to nominate Anthony Sorelli for being the first ever, uh, you know, I guess, pick. I, I, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll figure out this segment more as we go along because I definitely want to do this a lot more, probably in every game, uh, because there's still a ton of players on this team, even though you're starting to see guys really play together better as a team. You saw it in the last game. I said that that was – they already – they looked like at least in that game that they were in prime Stanley Cup final form, which – um, you know, if you've saw this team play, uh, if you've seen every game in the last Stanley Cup, last two Stanley Cup finals, you would know that this Lightning team was just on a whole nother level than everybody else, uh, even in the games that they lost. And, and those teams that, uh, you know, the, the games that Dallas and Montreal had to win in those series, uh, they had to play almost pristine, perfect hockey to be able to outmatch the Lightning in those games. But yeah, Anthony Sorelli, I think he, he, if we could get him on the show in the next 48 hours, that'd be fantastic. Probably not. We'll definitely get him on in the offseason. We'll definitely try to make that happen. But, yeah, Anthony Sorelli, number one pick uh, for the Locked On Lift. And we'll talk about the next pick, the next guy that we think that is really going to break out 
uh, that you're going to start seeing him really put up not not crazy con Smythe numbers, but someone that has definitely been playing fantastic hockey and someone that you're definitely going to see uh, make an effect, uh, whether it be in this series or even in game three. But first, I want to talk about our sponsor and take a break. Our first sponsor of the day is Built Bar. Now, I love brownies. Uh, I've been talking about how I want to eat healthy. I want to, you know, the gym isn't happening for me with the New Year's resolution. But uh, so I love my sweets and I've been trying to eat healthy. But brownies are just, you know, they, they, they're, 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 they're my kryptonite. And, and, but you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Sometimes I eat half the batter. Well, I don't. I try not to. You know, it depends if, 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 if I'm making it with siblings or if I'm making it with friends, you know, uh, and someone's throwing around the batter. I'll, I'll stick my finger in there. But guess what? Bill Bar just came out with a brownie batter puff. Yeah, you heard me right. A brownie batter puff. And if you haven't tried the puffs yet, I'm sure you'll want to. These things are chocolate covered marshmallow protein bars. I mean, how many protein bars are out there? You got you got the chalky ones, you got the waxy ones, but I bet you've never had chocolate covered marshmallow puff protein bars. Uh, delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% chocolate with only 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 7 grams of sugar. So go to built.com, use that promo code LOCK15, you'll get 50% off your order. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. So if you're watching us on YouTube, you're staying right here. If you're listening to us on an audio platform, you are coming back from the break right now. So we are continuing our talk about the locked on lift, the, the quiet phenomenon that has swept Tampa Bay, Florida. And what I, if you're just joining us now, the first question is, why are you joining us in the middle of a podcast? Very, very curious about that logic right there. Um, but just to reiterate what that is, um, you know, I, I like to loosely joke about how ever since Corey Perry and Ross Colton appeared on this show over the summer, Ross Colton took a, just another major step in his career. I tweeted it out the other night that Ross Colton, uh, it, it, it's this guy needs to be talked a lot about more in, in just the bigger hockey circles on the national circuit because he is slowly becoming uh, a star in front of our eyes. I, it's almost like the same effect that we saw in a way, in terms of not being talked about versus level of talent or potential talent that we see from Braden Point. And because Braden Point, we all know what he's done over the last couple of years. He's pretty much been the heart and soul of this Lightning playoff team, even though not not being able to capture that con Smythe. Uh, Victor Hedman and Andre Vasilevsky were very deserving of that award. But uh, Braden Point, you could make the case that he was definitely, you know, he definitely could have won uh, the con Smythe in, in the bubble at least. Um, but anyway, so we, we loosely, and then with Corey Perry having just, you know, you kind of figure it at his age, uh, kind of, you know, there's, there's not many miles left in the tank, but, uh, he's found a way he's found a resurgence here in, 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 in Tampa and he's had a fantastic season. So we're talking about, you know, we, we spoke about Anthony Sorelli in the first half of the segment, uh, a guy who's definitely on the cusp of breaking out a guy who, you know, he, he figures it out or it just clicks in game three. We could talk about four and five if there's a game five where, you know, he, he could be the, 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 the guy that really that Florida is going to have to worry about because once a guy like Sorelli gets hot because he's, he's everywhere, uh, you better watch out because he, he could, he definitely has the potential to rattle off two quick goals in the span of a period. So, uh, uh, so looking at the roster again, if you want to follow with me, go look on hockey reference. Scroll down to the scoring play, playoffs grid. So we spoke about Anthony Sorelli, of course, uh, only has one goal through nine games played. And I'm looking at the list right now. And another player that really just break that just just jumps off the page to me because he had a really good game last game. He's he, he's kind of struggled uh, for. I wouldn't say struggle, but still trying to figure it out this year. And that is Brandon Hagel. <coughs> we, excuse me. We've spoken about Brandon Hagel uh, a, a good amount on this pod about how, you know, it, it, he he's done a fantastic job in terms of being a, a presence on the ice. Obviously, it hasn't really translated into goals and points uh, as much as you would like to. Um, but, you know, I, I Julian Brees Boss, uh, Lightning General Manager, played a uh, paid a hefty fine for him, trading two 
very good prospects for Brandon Hagel, who scored 20 plus goals this year with the Blackhawks, the team that was quite frankly, not very good. Um, so especially with a guy like Brandon Hagel, you know, when you score 20 plus goals on a team with Patrick Kane and Alex Debrinkit, uh, you know, that, that means that you're doing something good out there. Um, but yeah, Brandon Hagel, uh, he got hurt in the last game. Didn't look good. Um, he, he took a bad spill out there. Um, he, he's one of those guys. He reminds me, you know, even though a lot of people like to make the comparison that him and pointer look a lot alike, they do in a way play the game almost similar. Uh, I, I know that that Hagel is more so uh, of a winger. Um, don't the Lightning maybe sometimes in tight situations, and I'm sure. <coughs> excuse me, allergies. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure John Cooper in certain situations, as Hagel will get more acclimated to this team and to the guys around him. I wouldn't say this year, but probably maybe next season. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if at one point he gets moved to the center of the ice just because of his his ability to be so elusive, especially in those tight spots. But Brandon Hagel through these playoffs, nine games, played one goal and four points. Uh, total to, uh, Average total ice time, only 13. Not even a little, little shade lower than 13 and a half, which I think is a good spot for him in that third line action. Um, a, a lot isn't really said about him just because he's kind of almost overshadowed by what Nick Paul has been able to do since he came to this team. Nick Paul, as we all know, two goals and five points through this through this playoffs, had two goals in game in the last series in game seven. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, he uh I, I think Brandon Hagel, he's one of those players where I feel like the opposing team could only keep him quiet with the style of play that he has for so long. And it's kind of like the same thing. You, you're kind of, you're kind of the same kind of recipe that you kind of see from an Anthony Sorelli. Obviously I, I, I think that Hagel has more of that, that sudden strike um, potential kind of what we saw from Braden point uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, and, and, you know, that's why, especially in a series like that, uh, like this, where, and I spoke on the last pod in game three, I think that the Panthers are going to come out swinging like a whole ton. They're going to be swinging for the fences. Uh, so they're going to leave themselves open to a lot of counterattacks uh, and, and and a lot of odd man rushes. And Brandon Hagel is definitely uh, the, the kind of guy that is going to be able to score on those quick chances. Uh, so don't be surprised, especially early on in the first period, uh, Brandon Hagel gets free on a couple of opportunities. Uh, you know, it seems like, though, on, on some of his chances – uh, so he's shooting, his shooting percentage is only 7.1. Uh, it seems as though is that what his issue is, is that he's somewhat trying to be too fine with the puck. Uh, there was a couple of opportunities that I've seen in, in the last couple of games in which it almost, he either shot it not on net or, or just kind of thought it held the puck too, too much. And, and that resulted in the goaltender being able to, to kind of, uh, to, to get set and, and make the great save. But yeah, Brandon Hagel, like I said, very, very explosiveness, very low key explosiveness. One of the guys like, like we've seen from Braden point um, has the ability to kind of just allow other teams forget about him and then make them pay for it by big time goals and, and break away or even shorthanded goals, which I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, once he starts to get better and starts to get more comfortable at that. Cause I feel like for him, it's kind of taken him a little while, but you could see that he's not letting it affect him or or anything. At least, at least externally, it doesn't look like he's any carrying any frustration or whatever. Uh, so we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. But I wouldn't be surprised if John Cooper puts him on on the on the PK on like a second line PK at some point. Just the if the Lightning are especially struggling out there. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that. So we're gonna take a break now and wrap things up. Uh, and talk about some of our expectations for game three in just a bit. But first, I want to talk about our last sponsor of the day, and that is betonline.net. Now, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your bet- betting needs. Bet Online uh, is, the, is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information. Uh, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts so real quick uh before we wrap things up a little bit of a short episode today we're going to put out a couple tomorrow 
um, just to kind of, you know, just talk about it. There's a lot to unpack from game two, as well as talk about game three as well. But game three, and, and this kind of ties in with our, our locked on lift segment that we ran today that we're probably going to talk about, obviously, a lot more in the future. Uh, shit, kudos to, to Mike on that idea. But um, the reason why I brought up those two guys, not only because I think they're genuinely on the cusp of breaking out and, and doing fantastic things for this club uh, for the rest of the playoffs, but because um, those guys, I feel like once those guys get going, especially in game three and in a potential series clinching game four, I think that those guys, players like that, especially a Sorelli, especially a Hagel, um, they're, they're the kind of guys that are going to make a team like the Florida Panthers just throw their hands up in the air because, you know, they're the Lightning already playing without Braden Point. You have some guys banged up here and there. Uh, I would imagine, you know, a guy like Chernak and, and other guys like that and Stamkos is going to be playing. But, you know, I'm sure at one point, <coughs> excuse me, at one point, Florida's like, well, you know, at least points out, so that's one less guy to worry about. And then, you know, it's like a hydra. You cut off one head and two heads spring up, and you, you, you cut down Braden Point, and then you have Braden Hagel and uh, and Anthony Sorelli pop up, and especially those guys and the potential that they have on on uh, on breakouts uh, down the ice, especially down the middle and on the wing. Um, very dangerous duo right there for the Lightning to have in their back pocket in the later rounds, so, uh, the later lines. So definitely – uh, I would be shocked if as soon as those guys, especially Brandon Hagel, who hasn't, like I, I stated before, hasn't played a whole ton of average ice time, only not even 13 and a half solid. But um, a guy like that gets hot. I, I think that he is, that, that it's going to get bumped up to about 18, about maybe even 19. It depends. I think, I don't think John Cooper is going to bump him up to 20 just yet. If the lightning do make it back to the final, I think, a lot of guys, especially on the lower line, especially guys like Brandon Hagel, are definitely going to see a lot more ice time. So uh, definitely tune in for tomorrow's episodes, plural, because we'll, like I said, we'll be talking about um, about uh, Game Three as well as some of the other players and some of the things to look out for uh, from the rest of the series as well. So that's been it for this episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host Adam Tanker. I'll talk to you in the next one.